I previously talked about the Kusama polka dot ecosystems and did a deep dive into their purpose, how they're structured, and why I think this layer zero network is something truly unique and worth paying attention to. I've also done a deep dive into Moon River and Moonbeam, which are on the Kusama and polka dot parachains, and they're fully compatible with Ethereum's virtual machine. Today, let's take a look at the Corora and Akala parachains on the Kusama polka dot networks that are serving to bring DeFi to life in the polka dot ecosystem. I'm Corey, and on this channel, I help you decode technology and innovation to grow your wealth on the journey to financial independence. In this video, I'll go over the smart contract parachains Corora and Akala on the Kusama and Polkadot networks and how these parachains are structured. So what is Corora and Akala? Corora and Akala are parachains that serve as the DeFi and stablecoin platform for the Kusama and Polkadot networks, which are separate standalone networks inside the same broader ecosystem. In case you have not checked out my prior videos on this topic, the basic concept is that Kusama and Polkadot networks are separate standalone networks that work together in a two-tiered structure with Kusama as the fast moving and experimental network to allow developers to quickly deploy a new technology and features in the wild. Polkadot on the other hand is the more mature sibling network that only allows projects to move onto its network once the kinks are worked out on Kusama. Founded by the Akala Foundation, Corora and Akala represent the scalable Ethereum virtual machine compatible networks on the Kusama relay chain in the case of Corora and on the Polkadot relay chain in the case of Akala. Corora on the Kusama network and Akala on the Polkadot network are each optimized for DeFi that allows a number of blockchain-based financial services, including a trustless staking derivative, which is Liquid KSM or Liquid DOT, a multi-collateralized stablecoin backed by Cross Assets, which is Corora USD and Akala USD. And they also offer an automated market maker decentralized exchange, which allows for the swapping between tokens with micro gas fees that can be paid in any token. Now to simplify the jargon, we're gonna go into what each one of these topics means. So first, we have the Ethereum Virtual Machine Compatibility. The Ethereum Virtual Machine Compatibility is a tech stack core of Ethereum. It's where all Ethereum accounts and smart contracts live. The Ethereum Virtual Machine defines the rules for computing a new valid state from block to block on the Ethereum blockchain. Because Corora and Akala are compatible with the EVM, this means that developers will not have to learn a completely new computing logic to write code that will work in the Corora and Akala ecosystems. In my prior video on Moon River and Moonbeam parachains, I pointed this out as a strategic feature of that parachain as well. And the reason is it means that developers will not have to deal with the compatibility headaches for code on one ecosystem, not working in another ecosystem, in the same way that we all have to deal with Windows versus Mac computers, not always working together seamlessly on the software side. So next, let's look at DeFi. DeFi, to recap, means decentralized finance. And this refers to the ability for blockchain technology to provide disintermediated financial services directly to consumers without the need for any middleman or intermediary, such as a bank, brokerage company, or insurance company. You can think of DeFi as the computer code version of direct-to-consumer products where you can go directly to the computer code living on the blockchain to make a loan, to earn yield, or to even buy, sell, or trade any assets. There's no bank or loan officer needed. I have a full video on DeFi that I will include in the show notes below and a link above as well in case you wanna check that out. Liquid KSM or Liquid DOT allows you to stake your Kusama or Polkadot tokens, which means depositing your tokens into the liquidity pool, which is like serving as the bank for your community and gives you a yield that you can withdraw after a set amount of time, just like the interest you you earn in a checking account or a savings account. Liquid KSM and Liquid DOT turbocharge this functionality because when you deposit your Kusama or DOT tokens, you get back a derivative token, which is Liquid KSM in the Corora network, which sits on the Kusama chain, or Liquid DOT, which is for the Akala network, which sits on the Polkadot relay chain. This allows you to earn rewards without sacrificing liquidity. So with LKSM or LDOT, you can trade it or you can use it as collateral to take out additional loans or even stake your LKSM or LDOT to get even more yield. In an inflationary environment, or one with very low interest rates, this type of innovation could help save people who live on a fixed income from realizing a loss in their overall fiat purchasing power, as well as gains from mass adoption over time that increase the value. So next, let's look at KUSD and AUSD stablecoins. 
So the Kurura Akala dollars, which is what KUSD and AUSD stand for, are decentralized, multi-collateralized stablecoins backed by cross-chain assets that peg themselves to the US dollar as a stable measure of value. Now let's break this down. This means that the underlying assets that support the stable coin and the stable value could be Polkadot, Kusama, Ethereum, Bitcoin, or any other assets where such features are added in the future. So KUSD is the stable coin native to Kusama, and likewise, AUSD is the stable coin native to Polkadot. Anyone can mint or create KUSD or AUSD by depositing the accepted collateral, meaning the KSM, DOT, Ethereum, or Bitcoin, into the smart contract and those tokens that you deposit are held against the KUSD or AUSD that you're issued. So next, what do we have here? We have the automated market maker and the decentralized exchange. So Karur and Akala both have automated market makers and DEXs inspired by the Uniswap protocol. And this is built into their DeFi networks to round out the full suite of services, basically offering a one-stop shop for all DeFi needs in the Kusama and Polkadot ecosystems. Let's look at the token economics for Karura. First, Karura is a utility token and it has a fixed supply of 100 million. The entire supply was minted in the Genesis block at launch and it can be used for paying transactions fees, staking to deploy smart contracts and pallets, node incentive programs. It can be used also for risk adjustment or governance on the network. It has a fixed supply so there won't be any more tokens created and it's deflationary. So to compare, we also have the Akala token and the Akala token economics. The Akala token is similar to the Kurura token, but it has a larger fixed supply of 1 billion and can be used for paying transaction fees, staking to deploy on smart contracts and pallets, for node incentives, algorithmic risk management, governance, and it also has a fixed supply and is deflationary. So there we have the core DeFi stablecoin platform offering for the Kusama and Polkadot ecosystems. Let me know in the comments what you think about the features that Karura and Akala offer versus other DeFi platforms. Join me on the path to decoding technology and innovation to grow your wealth on the journey to financial independence. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time.